The year is 1937. It's been 19 years since the end of World War I, and the children of the time don't have much in the form of toys. Granted, the cursed and rather peculiar looking Mickey Mouse and Pinocchio toys might be enough to entertain a small child for at least five seconds, but there was nothing for the slightly older child. There were wooden kits, toy guns, die-cast cars and clockwork cars with working gearboxes, but nothing that would entertain a child for more than half an hour. Enter Steam. In the 1930s, steam power was at its peak. Railways were booming and agriculture had progressed from horses to steam traction engines and steam portables as a means of power. At the tail end of this, children began train spotting. They congregated in groups along platforms and bridges, eager to catch a glimpse of the marvel that was steam. Children had logs which they would write the numbers of engines they had seen. Later on in the school playground they would exchange numbers and tell each other the fun stories of which locos they'd seen. Children would dream of driving, or maybe even owning, a steam engine one day. Enter Geoffrey Mannings. Jeffrey had seen the growing interest in steam. This gave him an idea. What if he made a steam powered toy? That way, every child could have their own steam engine at home. And so, Mamod was born in Birmingham, England. Early examples of Jeffrey Malin's Mamod were stationary engines. These could be steamed in a few minutes and used to run miniature tooling via belts. Jeffrey then set his sights on the toy vehicle market. His stationary engines were good, but there's only so many times you can watch a toy anvil hit itself before you get bored. The first of which came in 1961 in the form of a road roller, designed by Eric Mallins. It shared much of the same features with the stationary engines, that is, the oscillating cylinder and flywheel were exactly the same as they were just reused parts. This basic power unit would define all vehicle Mamods from now on. The Mamod also featured the iconic apple green and red livery. The next and arguably most iconic Mamod was the TE1. Features on this traction engine included a longer boiler and a full length canopy. It also sported the same apple green and red iconic livery. In 1972, Mamod also added the SW1, a steam wagon. This wagon also came with its own load in the form of little barrels. You could choose from either blue and red or green and red. Mamod also made steam locos, but I'll talk about that in another video. Now Mamod had their three main toys, they needed a way to market them. They gave us this advert. <laughs>
due to the success and growing popularity in Mammod, Mammod decided to extend their range to include special editions like the Showman's Engine, the Centurion and the Challenger version of the TE-1 and the SR-1. Both of these featured slide valve pistons, so had a higher power rating compared to the standard oscillating cylinder. Mamod keeps going to this day and has come out with a large range of steam powered toys, including the steam car, truck and van to name a few, not to mention the amount of locos it has also made. Mamod also made a special edition Pickford's Heavy Haulage TE1, which I personally quite like. It's made to resemble the Fowler Road loco, the Lion. The simplicity of the Mamod design has led to a large group of people, myself included, taking it upon themselves to paint and modify their models. Here are a few which I quite like. To finish off, here's some pictures of my Mamod, which I recently restored. As you can tell, I personally think it looks a lot better in the blue livery. The reason I did it in the blue livery is because my family used to own a Clayton Shuttleworth traction engine and I think I did a pretty good job in getting it to look like it. That's all for today's video then guys, if you liked it be sure to like, comment and subscribe, share it if you want, that would be quite interesting. Uh, this video took quite a while to make so I hope you like it. Uh, if you want more videos like this leave it in the comments, I'm thinking about doing videos like this on the Ferguson story and the Marshall story so if you want to see stuff like that or any more steam engine stories or whatever just drop it in the comments. I hope you liked it, please like, comment and subscribe because at the time of filming we're nearly at 800 subscribers and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching guys.